it's a sense of pride. I think everyone in the Houston area knows this is, you know, this is home of Mission Control. This is uh, where, you know, you see the famous Apollo 13 movie. You know, this is where those decisions were made. It's, you know, the, the vehicles launched from Kennedy Space Center, but the engineering is in, in Houston, Texas. This city of Houston, this state of Texas, this country of the United States was not built by those who waited and rested and wished to look behind them. This country was conquered by those who move forward, and so will space. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Twain. Tranquility. We copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA, was formed in 1958 to research aeronautics, scientific discoveries, and of course, space exploration. NASA was also formed in response to the Russians launching the first satellite, Sputnik which started the space race, one of the largest competitions in history. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. And led to events like the first American flight into space in 1961, or when astronauts Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, and Edwin Aldrin on the Apollo 11 made the first lunar landing in 1969. The space program in Johnson Space Center has created a legacy for Houston in addition to contributing to education and the economy. I think it's very important. That's how we got the Astrodome and the Astros. I was thinking kind of like Astros, you know, astronauts, like because Houston, everything's in, the command center and stuff is in Houston, so I was thinking that's why they named it after. The shuttle only launched from Florida, but with that said, they do know that Houston is a part of aerospace, they may not just understand exactly what Houston does or doesn't do, but um, I think that Houston is very important when it does come to aerospace, and it is known for that. I have a picture of me and my cousin in front of this rocket in Rocket Park, and then here, fast forward however many years, and I never thought I'd be working out here, and I'm thinking, hey, I actually work there now. So that was all my, that was my space exploration story. Of course, I was in high school when they first started and stuff, so then to actually be a part of history in the making was pretty exciting and to have a, a pretty good job to be so young. One of the largest benefits I believe that NASA has for, for education, for schools, is, is its ability to inspire people in STEM, students in STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics because that's really the foundation uh, of exploration, the foundation of building a vehicle that can go into space. So I believe Hunch does an exceptional job of doing that because what we do with Hunch, High School Students United with NASA to create hardware, is we, we make sure that one of our people are in a classroom at least once a week. So I've worked with over a thousand different students in, in Galena Park ISD, Houston ISD, Clear Creek ISD, Conroe ISD, Cypher ISD, a lot of the major school districts in the greater Houston area. In 2010, the Constellation program budget was cut by the Obama administration. This initially ended the manned space flights and extended the life of international space stations with the intention of outsourcing space flight into other nations and private companies. Oh, tons of jobs. I mean, I, th I know countless people that work there. I and mean, when it closes down, you know, we're going to find that we have a huge influx of people without a job. If all the jobs go away, right now we still have, you know, space stations, so we still have jobs out there. The last uh, shuttle landing, we, they broadcast it for all of the Houston employees. They set up a huge um, jumbotron screen outside of Johnson Space Center in Houston, and they invited um, all of their JSC employees and contractor employees and their families to come and watch. They broadcast it and they have lots of speakers. So the whole Johnson Space Center area um, was set up for that. They had lots of astronauts there and lots of activities going on for the kids and um, lots of little giveaways. But uh, it was it was amazing. <laughs> it was um, if you if you work for NASA and you work on the spatial program, they talk about a culture and it, it is a culture. It's a culture of people who are all working towards one 
mission and that mission is a safe mission for the space shuttle. Um, all of our team members met that morning, was early in the morning, it was about four or so in the morning, it was very dark and very early, but uh, we all met up there together and so it was nice as a team to be able to kind of witness that together. Many Americans question the purpose of modern space exploration. I think the purpose of space exploration is, <clears throat> is to, well I think initially it was to say that we could go into space, to say, oh well we can do that, let's try it. Now I think the main thing is now that we have so many inventions that have resulted in us going to space, I think now it's all about um, I'm gonna say inventing things, but improve, improving things, you know, medicines, um, Velcro, we say that a lot. Um, that, it's to better ourselves as a country, as, an, as a nation. We now have the ability to study in a microgravity environment for an extended period of time. And so there's a lot, there's a lot to be learned there and, and a lot of information to be gained. That panel, it was called the Columbia Accident Investigation Board and they made a lot of recommendations of what NASA should do in the future. And I think President Obama and his administration were really trying to follow uh, some of that and, um, you know, change is unpopular. So, um, so NASA needs some changes. I don't think anybody at, that works for NASA or with NASA um, doesn't agree that there are some changes that need to be made. With the change in NASA's budget, the country has a new idea where space exploration should be. NASA has actually decided to go in the direction of commercial crew for, uh, for getting people just up and down from the International Space Station, which, which means essentially they kind of turn that over to private businesses to compete. The public gets involved in the space race like, like they want. If it becomes uh, commercial, then this, a successful flight, well, that's going to determine how soon we get anywhere. The idea is to kind of create this market for people going up and down to the space station, and that would be easier and cheaper if that's done by private companies. So that's the idea. Um, private companies haven't done that in a very long time. It's been NASA doing it. Um, so there's still question marks there. And unlike the previous program, we are setting a course with specific and achievable milestones. And step by step, we will push the boundaries, not only of where we can go, but what we can do. I think it's difficult because there's not a real mission. I think whenever the Constellation program was first canceled, a lot of the Apollo astronauts came out and I think they wrote a letter to the president and um, they were just concerned that there isn't a clear mission as far as where we're going. With the Apollo program, all of the technological advances that came, all of the awe, all of the feats that were overcome in engineering was because they engineered to a specific mission. They were able, you know, to have an idea of what they needed to do, use engineering, solve the problem. And the fear is that if there's not a clear mission, it's a little bit difficult to engineer towards something to the future. I think it, it definitely hurts hurt morale. I like to see NASA continue. I will say that, you know, if um, I, I mean, it's, I'd like to see us, you know, go to other planets. And I don't know about, you know, visiting, you know, having outposts and people living on these other planets, but definitely explore, exploring other planets and, you know, continuing to um, provide day-to-day um, -day uses for things that they they've invented because of space, because of space, uh, space uh, travel. Without a doubt, if you look at the history of what NASA has been able to provide uh, the U.S. and the world as far as technology improvements, it's definitely something we need to continue to do. The possibilities of what's out there is kind of endless, so I mean if there's programs that will help contribute to fund it, then I say yes, continue with the funding. <laughs> Otherwise, the other countries are going to be ahead of us and they're going to probably have, you know, better technology and, and they'll be ahead of us as far as, you know, their exploration. If we don't catch up, we'll be behind. Well, hopefully we can get Orion flying here as quick as possible so we can eliminate our dependency on Russia for being able to get crew to the International Space Station and then it can go on and explore further things as a country you know we've been first in the space race and i think it's major it's it's going to be a major impact um if any of that changes of course it has changed but if it gets worse how's that if we have to pay another country to get us up to the space station i think that's that's awful that 
as long as there are other countries that are involved, I think that U.S. needs to stay in the race and always be the number one country that's leading the way for whatever there is out there to discover. Exploration of the unknown might not strike everyone as a priority, yet audacious visions have the power to alter mind states, to change the assumptions of what is possible. When a nation permits itself to dream big, those dreams pervade its citizens' ambitions.